Hey, it's Marley from The Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Monday, October 24th. So welcome to Monday. Welcome to Moon Day, I should say. It's not a complete Moon Day because we have two other aspects other than the Moon taking place. But of course, on Moon Day, we definitely feel the energies of the Moon much stronger than any other day. And the Moon is in Libra energy here all day. We will see the Moon go void, of course, at 8.36 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we will be moving into Scorpio energy setting us up for the new moon partial solar eclipse in Scorpio energy taking place on Tuesday. So we're very much in this new moon window, very much in this Scorpio, I'm going to say eclipse energy of death, rebirth, resurrection, and true transformation. And with all of the energies coming at us, of course, we just had Saturn go direct, the sun and Venus move into Scorpio energy just yesterday on the 23rd. And we're still adjusting to that. We're still acclimatizing to that. And we have this moon energy in Libra energy that just wants us to stay happy and positive and light and, and balanced in life. And because we're now in Scorpio season where extremes are a thing, I don't know how much success we're actually going to have in feeling peachy keen in our emotions and in our heart space um, as we are kind of navigating a very, very choppy sea here as we enter into the new moon window. So there are eight different aspects here today. Six of them involve the moon. Before the moon even gets started, we have the true note making a very awkward interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer. So the true node, of course, is on this Taurus and Scorpio axis. That's why we're having uh, the eclipses that we're having on the Taurus and Scorpio axis. The true node is trying to get us on the right path in order for us to reach our soul's mission, our soul's purpose, our soul's destiny. We are supposed to be making some plans, but of course, we're in a time right now where it is impossible to make any plans. We don't have the clarity needed in order to do such things. And we get in this really wild time frame where we're constantly looking back at all that has happened and how it has changed us and where we've been pushed into new roles and responsibilities and realities that we wouldn't have chosen for ourselves. And we're trying to understand that the spiritual lesson here is for our growth, for our improvement, for us to reach our soul's mission, our soul's truest potential but it kind of hurts. And Chiron, the wounded healer, is illuminating that hurt, that pain, that suffering, but also trying to show us where it is that, guess what? We are pretty strong. We are very powerful. This is a time to really kind of see ourselves in a brand new light of strength and resiliency. And because of that, we're kind of going back and forth. And keep in mind that the moon in Libra wants us to find a middle ground a balance, if you will, but we do so by exploring those extremes. And we are now in Scorpio season where we live more in the extremes than anything else. So we're kind of teeter tottering from the past to the present to the future. We're feeling bad. We're feeling sad. We're feeling that grief. We're feeling that pain. And then we're feeling powerful. We're feeling, you know, control. We're feeling a little bit of strength. We're seeing both sides of the coin. And of course, that is a very helpful thing for us as we navigate this very, very tough adjustment period. The moon is going to bump into Uranus in such a way that would provide us an opportunity to learn something new. What are we learning? Well, we're likely learning a brand new perspective or understanding to a situation that we've been having a hard time coming to peace with and coming to terms with. Now, any time that Uranus, who is the great awakener, mind you, is in a little bit of a tough aspect, what we can expect, first of all, is a little bit of emotional chaos. We can expect a little bit of a disruption to our day, to our thoughts, to our emotions. There's likely information or situations or ideas coming at us that totally put us off of the path that we were walking, off of the energy that we were sitting in, off of the plans, the routines that we had kind of constructed for the day. And again, the moon in Libra wants us to find peace and harmony and balance, wants us to keep things light and fluffy, but it's going to be a very hard task to do in this Scorpio energy, in this new moon window, 
in this eclipse energy as well. So we're getting a little bit of emotional chaos from this Uranian energy. Uh, it is likely, again, that there is sign, some kind of shock, some kind of unexpected opportunity or situation unfolding that really just throws a wrench into the quote unquote stability that we were hoping to kind of achieve in our emotions and in our headspace. The moon trines Saturn. This is a beautiful energy. Saturn, of course, just freshly direct, still not even moving forward in his path, just kind of rubbing his eyes, getting the crusties out of there, trying to piece together what has happened over the last five, five and a half months of being retrograde. Saturn, of course, the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles and responsibilities over structures and foundations in this Aquarian energy is kind of excited to get putting the plan together. We have to get a strategy. We have to think very calculated. What are we feeling right now? Well, we're feeling a little bit of weight. Now, this is a positive energy, so the weight isn't going to crush us, but we do have this innate responsibility, this commitment, this obligation that we are now feeling a little bit eager to pursue. So over the last couple of weeks where the changes and transformations have been kind of forced upon us, we've been feeling this existential dread. We know we have to boss up. We know there's new roles and responsibilities for us. We know that our reality is rapidly changing, but we've been hesitant to actually kind of embody what it is that we have to embody in order to actually deal with the situation and get to building new routines, new systems, new foundations in our life in order to actually achieve our goal. This particular energy is saying, you know what? I'm looking at the positives. I'm trying to be optimistic. Yes, I know that there's a lot of responsibility weighing on my shoulder, but I feel like I'm able to tackle it. I know that the changes and the transformations are coming at me, whether I want them or not. So it does kind of seem like the best solution would to have an open mind and open heart. We're seeing both sides of the coin. We are exploring the pros and cons of all the situations that you know, have unfolded and that are currently sitting on our plate for some kind of decision to be made. And we are getting a little bit of a grounded, practical approach to what it is that we actually have to do in order to kind of uh, boss up and take on the changes, the roles and responsibilities that are just waiting for us to kind of grab life by the horns and get to work maneuvering and changing some of the, I'm going to say relationships, routines, situations in our physical realm so that we can kind of cut the cord with the past, leave the garbage, leave the trash in the past where, where it belongs and kind of prepare ourselves to start fresh. Keep in mind, a new moon is a very dark time. There's no light in the sky. We have to sit with the heaviness, with the weight, with the ups, with the downs, with the thoughts, with the emotions in order for us to prepare to set our intentions on what it is that we actually need to do to make the changes, to make the transformation that we know that we need to make. The moon comes up to, bumps into, sits next to Mercury. Mercury rules over the mental plane. Mercury is in Libran energy. This is why we're hella indecisive. We're sitting on the fence. There's too many things to debate. There's pros, there's cons, there's ups, there's downs, there's light, there's dark, there's good, there's bad. There's all kinds of things. And what we're attempting to do is to find the right choice, the right decision, which just kind of happens to be in the middle of all of the things that we're currently trying to contemplate and debate. Now, the moon and Mercury come together, uh, A, gives us a little bit of a moment of clarity on what it is that our heart and head need to get in agreement and in alignment about, and B, gives us a beautiful opportunity to kind of communicate and express our thoughts and our feelings to those that need to hear it. Keep in mind, we are in a very awkward time. We're in an awkward time of adjustment. We're in an awkward time of energy. We're in the dark phase of the moon. We're in eclipse energy. We are just kind of acclimatizing to Saturn being direct and to this new Scorpio energy. Now, this doesn't mean to keep your mouth shut. It just means to kind of put your thoughts through the filter a couple of times before you let it come out of your mouth. It also is giving you a huge heads up that maybe... Even if you are speaking your truth, if you're coming from your heart space and you're trying to articulate yourself as best that you can, maybe 
Your message just isn't going to be heard or received in the way that you would hope. It doesn't mean to avoid the situation. It just means to be open to having conversations that you might have to spend a little bit more time and energy uh, to explain, to communicate, to have that exchange so that everybody's on the same page. Um, what I would kind of want to see happen for us is that, you know, some of the things that we've been debating, some of the pros and cons and ups and downs and goods and bads of all these choices and decisions and paths and directions that we've been contemplating, what I would hope is that getting our heart and our head on the same page about something means that we can eliminate some of the choices, some of the options, get that off of the plate altogether, really kind of hone in and zone in on the very few options that are left for us so that we can start really kind of aligning with the path, with the choice, with the decision, with the vision, with the dream that we've been kind of, you know, tossing back and forth. The moon is going to make a very awkward interaction with Neptune. Neptune is retrograde in Pisces in his place of power. This is our intuition, our higher self, our dreams, our creativity. Uh, we do get oversensitive and highly stimulated with this particular energy when it is in a not so nice aspect. The downside of this is that we feel everything. We feel so much that we don't even know what we're feeling. We, we don't know if we're feeling our energy or our feelings or other people's or picking it up from our environment. And sometimes we can get so overwhelmed with the subtle energies that we're picking up on that a we can't even align with our intuition because we don't know what is intuition and what is ego and b we actually just get so overwhelmed that we want to shut down we want to numb we want to disassociate we want to run we want to hide we want to just escape from reality. And you know what, with all the energies coming at us, it wouldn't surprise me if all of us had a couple of minutes throughout the day where we just wanted to curl up in a ball, bury our head in the sand and just ride this particular energy out until we can wake up and everything is hunky dory again. But we know that that is not going to happen. It is very, very much uh, dependent on our actions, our bravery, our courage right now, what it is that we make out of our own lives. We are in this great awakening. We are recognizing that it is up to us to get out of living in our heads and actually take action in our physical realms in order to kind of be in power and control and dictate some of the outcomes of our lives. Again, making good out of a lot of bad the moon kind of interacting with Neptune in this way. We are going to be feeling all the feels. We are going to be feeling a little bit upset, though, because any time that the moon in Libra um, is feeling anything other than happiness and joy and peace and balance and harmony, uh, we're going to the extreme with that. And we can definitely count on just feeling so freaking overwhelmed that, again, we just want to kind of numb and disassociate and just not want to deal with life. Mars goes ahead and has a very positive interaction with Chiron. And this is a beautiful thing. Mars is um, about to be in his place of power as the ruler, well, co-ruler of this Scorpio energy. If you haven't downloaded your moon guide, I'm going to recommend you do that. If you haven't listened to the astro forecast that I put out for this new moon event, I'm going to recommend you do that too. Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire, even our anger. He is pre-shadow period ready, ready to go retrograde on the 30th in this Gemini energy, the intellectual battlefield, the mental plane, if you will. And Mars interacting with Chiron, the wounded healer who is retrograde in Aries energy right now. Lucky for us, this is a positive interaction. What does this mean? It means that we are sitting in our wounds, sitting in our pain, sitting in our trauma, sitting in our suffering, and we are kind of using that as a fuel, as an inspiration, as a motivation to boss ourselves up, to come hella, hella tunnel visioned on what it is that we have to do. Sometimes we need to use the darker force energies of emotion, of thoughts in order to propel us to actually make the changes that we're afraid to make. Nobody ever makes any changes when we're comfortable, when we're happy, when we're content. Change only comes out of discontentment. Change only comes out of being uncomfortable. Change only comes out of having a breaking point. And we are definitely in the season Scorpio season being about transformation through watching things die and end and close the door on certain things in order for new elements, 
new parts of ourselves, new relationships, new opportunities to actually have a place to be born and created into. Again, Scorpio and Taurus themes. Um, Mars interacting in, with Chiron in this way is a pep talk. It is a motivation. It is a blast of energy. It is taking all of the negative experiences, thoughts, feelings, memories, and using it as a fuel to fire the passion, the desire within in order for us to kind of execute what needs to be done in order to actually get ourselves from where it is that we're at to where it is that we desire to be. Over this next week, you are going to feel a lot of intense physical pressure. If you haven't listened to the Ascension forecast for this week, definitely go ahead and listen to that. This is Mars's last week in a direct forward motion. The minute that he goes retrograde, we are low on physical energy. We are low on passion. We are low on the aggressive pursuit that we need in order to align with our mission and our purpose. Things get cloudy. Things get confused. But before you say, well, haven't we been in that state? I thought we were moving forward. We are. We have all of these planets coming out of a retrograde. We have Mars deciding to go into a retrograde. So although there is a lot of, uh, I'm going to say, lackluster going to take place once Mars goes retrograde. We have all these other planets pushing us forward, pushing us forward. It's not a bad thing that Mars is going retrograde at all. It means that we're actually going to have to pay attention to energy management and not go balls to the walls and burn ourselves out before we ever get to the end goal. Instead, we're actually going to, you know, be patient and take calculated steps and use our energy wisely in order to achieve the kind of goals, the visions, the dreams that are currently being activated in our mental plane right now. So I see this as being a good energy because we're taking the pain and we're turning it into power. We're taking the darkness, we're turning it into light. We're taking the not so nice and we're using that as a fuel in order to create something good. The moon goes ahead three hours later and trines Mars. So this is a good energy, I, I think, because first of all, um, we're hella inspired. We're damn well and determined. We are cutting through the blocks, the blocks, the obstacles in our mental plane in order to actually align with a certain vision, a certain idea that we actively want to pursue. That's that Mars and Gemini energy. The moon, of course, being in Libra and energy gives us the opportunity to see both sides of the coin, to explore uh, both sets of emotions. If we chose to do this, how would I think? How would I feel? What would that look like? If I chose to do that, what would it what would it look like? How would I think? How would I feel? We have the ability to see both sides of the coin, to feel both sides of the emotions of that coin. And of course, Mars just wants to focus in on the direction, on the idea, on the vision, on the dream that we have to actively pursue. So I see this being a good kind of juju. Now we are going to end the day off with probably the toughest aspect that we will have here today, which is the moon squaring Pluto. The moon getting into the boxing ring, fighting it out with Pluto, the god of the underworlds right? This doesn't sound so pleasant for happy-go-lucky, light and fluffy Libra energy. And seeing as Pluto is in his place of power, reigning over this new moon in Scorpio, you best believe that the squeeze has to be put on us in order to take us down memory lane, to think of all the times that we've given our power away, that we let other people have more power in our lives than we chose to have in ourselves, and what that actually meant for us. We have to take a walk down memory lane and examine the pain, examine the trauma, examine the suffering, review it, reframe it in such a way that we get an aha moment, that we turn that pain into power, that we, that we look at what we probably view as a weakness and see that that is an opportunity to turn it into our greatest strength. We have to break ourselves down. We have to beat ourselves down in order for us to realize how strong we actually are. We have to sit in victimhood until we realize that victimhood is only ever going to get us victimhood. We have to sit in victimhood in order to be the victor, right? This is what this whole Plutonian energy is all about. This is what Scorpio season is all about. We have to take a look at the bad and realize that it's an opportunity for us to make good. We have to take a look at the pain in order to see that this is the opportunity to transform it into a source of power. This is what it's all about. Yes, emotionally doesn't feel good. It's not supposed to. 
If it felt good, we would never make a change. If it felt good, we would never boss up and be brave and bold and courageous enough to actually put ourselves out there to actively pursue new passions and dreams and nothing would ever change. We are currently in Scorpio season where change is the only thing that you can count on. Change and transformation are the name of the game, but we have to be bold and brave and courageous enough to actually do the work.